Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 6A in Mid Michigan. And today we are going to be tackling these barberries because I've been meaning to trim them for quite some time and it is time, it is over time, in fact. So um, we're gonna take them back and we're going to make them into some beautiful spheres. But um, before we do that, I'm also just going to take a couple of small branches off of this viburnum to give us a little bit more space. So once we do this, it will kind of open up this area and allow more airflow as well. All right, so I'm getting my gloves on because it's always good to do that, especially when you're pruning things with roses. Um, and I really love these gloves. I got these at Costco. These are by Wells um, Lamont and they are hard to hide gloves and they are fantastic, they fit great. Now, something that many people don't know is on many of these tools, there's a little notch right here, and you can actually use that to cut a little bit bigger of a branch. So that's what we're gonna use on this viburnum shrub in order to take a couple of these branches off. So I'm just gonna follow this branch all the way back to where it meets the larger branch, which is way back here, and then I'm going to stick it into that little half moon where um, we can cut it. Oops, get this out of the way here. And it will come right off. We'll do that also right over above this barberry here. So we're just gonna trace this right back to here. We're going to set it into that half moon. And sometimes it takes more than one cut. There we go. All right, now I could prune all these with these shears, but I'm gonna start by using my hedge clippers that are electric, and then I'm gonna use these to just kind of tidy things up at the end because it'll go a lot faster that way. So that's the basic shape that I want. Now I'm gonna do the other one and afterwards we'll kind of tidy this up by using the manual clippers just to kind of get at some of the ones in the back um, or hard to reach areas.
All right, time to get out my hand clippers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of push some of the debris back down into the garden bed here because I don't really need to clean it up. This plant is nice and healthy. Um, it'll just break down really quick. You can clean it up and you definitely should clean it up if you have an unhealthy plant. But you'll see, I didn't want to like get down into these uh, other plants and clip them. So I've got to do that manually. And then just making sure I've got the curve good. And these have a really nice sharp blade. So the cuts will be a little bit better than the cuts that were with the electric a hedge trimmer. when you do a project like this it's important to kind of step away and stand back and take a look at what you've done so you can get a sense of how it looks overall because it can be deceiving if you're on one side of the plant so I think that one looks pretty good the challenge right now is kind of getting around these plants to trim some of the back off Not too bad though. There we go, I think that's looking pretty good. Just a little bit off the edge here. And they should fill in really nicely. After this prune, we'll get a really nice flush of new growth, which will be that gorgeous lemon tello color. Well, I think that looks fantastic. They're all pruned up and ready for another season of growth. All right, our next project is going to be to plant some lavender and some basil. And uh, we definitely are going to do that in the potager garden as well as in some pots or urns that are on our deck steps. Let's go. All right, well, here we are sitting on the side of the deck and we have these two lovely urns. I actually have some seedlings of pansies that are in here, or violas, I can't remember which, that I'm just going to pop out. And then we are going to plant these gorgeous lavender plants in here because I'm hoping the bunnies don't like to eat lavender. And these are um, the Sweet Romance. And these are loving of the full sun environment that they will be in. And they grow about 12 to 18 inches tall and about 12 to 18 inches wide. So they should be just perfect for these pots. Now these are only hardy down to zone five. So I'll have to transplant them probably into like the potager garden or somewhere else at the end of the season. But for right now, I hope that they grow on and look beautiful in these pots. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just remove the covers off of these urns. And then I have this little tray with my Hori Hori knife and I'm just gonna kind of scoop out some of these little seedlings. I wanna save some of these because I think if I grow these on somewhere in the shade, um, then I don't have to totally get rid of them. They won't go to waste. But it's going to be too hot here soon. I actually looked at the 15 day forecast and I think we have some days that are going to be in the 90s coming. So um, that's going to be kind of crazy. All right, let me grab them out of the other pot and then what we're going to do is we're just going to chop up these pots. We're going to get some of the old soil out. We're going to mix it with some fresh soil and then we're going to pop in the lavender. 
seedlings in this pot are just a skosh bigger than the seedlings in the other pot. I think because they get a little bit more shade and the soil is a little bit better in this pot for whatever reason. All right, I think that's enough seedlings for now. So let's just kind of chop this pot up. I wanna make sure the soil is good and loose. There's some more of those seedlings, we'll grab those. I'll throw out some of that sedum that's growing in there. Now we're ready for a little bit of fresh soil to mix in. This sweet romance smells so good. I just love having things that are scented plants in the garden, even if it means that you have to, you know, touch and feel them in order to get that scent. It's one of the reasons I love thyme as a creeping ground cover, because when you step on it uh, on walkways, it just smells so wonderful. And I'm just cutting the bottom off this plant completely because it is so root bound. And I'm gonna plant these just a little bit high because lavender do not like to be wet. It is going to rain later on today, so I'm definitely not going to water these in. All right, I think that looks great. And I have some alyssum that I could put in here that's kind of creeping in some of the cracks of my pathways that I might put around it, but we'll see how quickly this grows on. I'm just going to put this cloche over it to make sure none of the squirrels or chipmunks dig in this pot while the roots are getting established. And we'll take it off once it gets a little bit bigger. I'm just going to scrape the top off of this pot here because it's a little bit crusty with some seeds from the maple trees. And it's just not good. And what am I going to do with it? I'm going to toss it under my duck. it'll just break down under there. All right. Now let's kind of break this soil up. Make sure we get some nice fresh soil in here as well. Usually after winter, the soil has kind of compacted quite a bit in these pots. And we've had so much rain, just a lot more rain than we usually get here in Michigan. All right, a nice big scoop of new soil. Now I put that right up on pot because that way when it rains, it actually will take some of the nutrients from that soil and it will push it right down throughout the whole pot. Boy, these are even root bound. They're growing through the bottom of the pot here. I've actually grown this in my garden and I really love it. It's in my flower garden. So I think it'll be good here too. And again, I'm just trying to plant this a little bit high and mound it up around it so that the water kind of drains away from the crown of this plant because they don't like to be wet. All right, let me clean this up and we'll show you what they both look like together. Well, I think these two little urns turned out lovely and I'm looking forward to seeing them grow on. 
The next project we're gonna do is with these basil, and they don't look that great, but that's because I got them on clearance for a dollar each. So I got three of these, and some of the leaves are probably going to fall off, but I'm just going to take them off anyways. And what I did was I pinched these back, and so that's going to make these sprout additional stems, and we will have a beautiful plant. So let's get these planted in the potager garden. Well, in this garden bed right now, we have some small tomatoes and some uh, Verbena bonariensis. So this is a tomato right here, and then we have a, a Verbena bonariensis here and here. So we're just going to tuck these basil right in. They make an excellent companion plant to the tomatoes, and boy, do they smell great. Again, very root bound. So we'll just pull that bottom right off. You may notice that I've mulched with um, my shredded bark mulch and it works great in vegetable gardens just as well as in uh, regular gardens. Scented herbs like this also are not um, things that rabbits really like, so I'm excited to get these into my garden because anything that helps to deter them and keep them a little bit further away from eating all my plants is good with me. These are a plant that really like it nice and warm. So you usually have to wait till June to plant them out. And I think that's why they were on clearance is because not only was it cold, but it was also really rainy. So they got really kind of droopy and sad. But they're gonna look fantastic in this potager garden because they're gonna do really well. The bricks that are around it also help with keeping it nice and warm. And there aren't any trees around, so there's plenty of sunshine. I can't wait to harvest these and make myself some caprese salads, also some for the family. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Thanks so much for joining me in the garden. We'll see you next time.